Hi, Dan Groninger here for GE Inspection Technologies with another in, another installment in our series of instructional videos on the Mentor EM Eddy Current Flaw Detector. In this installment, we're going to talk a little bit about the interaction between sample rate and frequency in the instrument and how to go about setting up uh, your app using Create to stay out of trouble. So, I've opened with Create here. And if we go to our channel configuration in Create, we see that this is a two-frequency simultaneous injection app. I've got a lower frequency of 2.7 kilohertz and a higher frequency of 11 kilohertz. For our purposes here, the lower frequency is going to be our limiting factor. These frequencies are the frequency of the AC signal that is being fed through our probe. All right. There's another parameter called sample rate that determines how often we pass a packet of those frequencies through the probe to measure an impedance point on the instrument. And our displays on the instrument are a series of those points over time drawn together with lines. And we'll switch over to the instrument here in a second and I'll show you how some of that works. But again, the important thing to remember is that sample rate is how often we pass the current through the probe uh, to make an impedance measurement. And frequency is the frequency of the AC sine wave signal that is passed through the probe. So the frequency of the signal used in bursts to measure impedance and sample rate is how often, how many times per second we are taking that measurement. So if we switch over to the instrument, here's the application that was just set up in Create. Our lower left list as you here happens to be the lower frequency. You see we have our uh, frequency 2.7 kilohertz, 2700 hertz, a sample rate of 600 hertz. So if I were to, on my display, instead of line mode, look at point mode, you'll notice as I move my probe, let's do it this way, we will balance and show liftoff. You notice my signal is now a series of dots. Each one of those dots is an individual sample since our sample rate is set to 600 hertz, if I have one second worth of persistence on the uh, list as you, where do I have my, yes, I have one second of persistence, so there are 600 total dots displayed on each of the list as you at the moment. On the, the upper list as you, I'm still in line mode, you know, it looks like a continuous line. On the lower, I'm in point mode, and you can see the individual points. If I go back to line, it draws lines between them, so connect the dots. Okay. So that is what sample rate is all about. So if I rapidly lift off, you notice the dots are far apart. If I move the probe more slowly, the dots all run together. It looks almost like a smooth line again. Okay. So that's a good in a uh, also put our prime frequency in point mode and you can see a rapid change in signal has the dots very far apart. Slower change in signal, the points run together, look almost continuous. So that's what sample rate is all about. Now if I were to go back to sample rate and raise it, I've doubled the sample rate, and now even when I make a rapid mo movement with the probe, you can see it's still stringing together, looking more like a continuous line. Now, sample rate and frequency play off of each other. We need to have at least two complete cycles of our sine wave in order to take a good impedance measurement. So if our sine wave is 2.7 kilohertz, we can't really run our sample rate at more than half of that. So 1300 hertz works. 
If I try to go to 1400 hertz, the instrument says the frame rate is too high for the requested frequencies. Uh, frame rate and sample rate are in, uh, interchangeable terms. Uh, like many other things in eddy current, there are multiple names for pretty much the same thing. Frame rate and sample rate uh, are equivalent terms when it comes to the Mentor UT or the Mentor EM. Okay. Now, one thing that uh, many of our customers encounter for the first time when trying to, to run a low frequency inspection is the default sample rate in the instrument is typically a thousand hertz. If you don't change it in Create, if you don't make the the uh, the app special, a uh, thousand hertz is the default sample rate. If you then try to take your frequency lower than twice that, say you try to go to 1500, whoops, that took us to 15 megahertz, let's say we want to go to 1.5 kilohertz, and it says, nope, I'm sorry, you can't go there, that's too low. So if we go to 2500 hertz, 2.5 kilohertz, that's okay because it's more than twice our sample rate. If we wanted to go to a 1200 hertz frequency, we would have to first take our sample rate, lower it to 500, then we can take our frequency down to 1.2 kilohertz. Okay, so as long as we keep our sample rate less than half of the frequency, the instrument's happy. If we try to break that rule, go to 800 hertz, it doesn't like that. It'll return me to the, the frequency I was at before I tried to change it. So it's important to keep the, the uh, sample rate at less than half. So let's put our probe in our part. We'll balance it. And let's crank our gain up high enough to see noise. Balance again. Higher. Balance. So there we can see how much noise we have. And this is with a ratio of about 2 to 1. Let's go 580, our sample rate. So there's a ratio of about 2 to 1 between sample rate and frequency. Notice I'm getting a fair amount of noise. Uh, just changing my hand on the probe is moving things around. If I were to now go to a much lower sample rate, say 100 hertz, now I can use up to 12 cycles of the carrier wave to demodulate. Look how much quieter my signal is. All right, so the greater the ratio between sample rate, let's go back to 2.7 kilohertz where we started here, in 600, balance. There's the amount of noise that I have in my signal. Okay, balance. If I go to 100 hertz sample rate, balance. There's the kind of noise I have in my signal. Now you notice there's some variation coming from just the movement of my hand. Let's take the probe off the part. So there's the noise at 100 hertz sample rate. There's the noise at 600 hertz sample rate. So the lower the sample rate with respect to the, the frequency that you're using, the better the signal to noise ratio. However, the slower the sample rate, the lower the sample rate, the slower that the probe has to be passed over the part, over the defect, in order to see the defect. Okay. Um, in high-speed applications, say you're looking um, using a differential probe on steel, typically you might use a hundred kilohertz frequency. Um, very commonly, you would use a one kilohertz sample rate. 
So you're able to demodulate on 100 cycles of the, uh, the carrier wave being passed through the part. It gives you an excellent signal to noise ratio. If you had a very high speed test, say you were looking at uh, drawn wire that was moving at several inches per second past the probe, in order to cover the, the probe, in order to have a flaw present itself in front of the probe for two or three samples to be sure you see it, you need a much higher sample rate. Um, it's not unusual for, say, rotary bolt hole inspection to use a very high sample rate, um, often 20 kilohertz sample rate. So we have to make sure that our uh, frequencies are sufficiently higher than that, uh, a couple of hundred kilohertz, in order to be able to demodulate very effectively on those high, uh, high speed, high frequency signals. So thank you for joining me. Again, I'm Dan Groninger for GE Inspection Technologies. And this has been a recap of the interaction between sample rate and frequency on the instrument and special considerations for low frequency applications. Thank you.